po, everyone, and welcome back, and thank you for uh, being here virtually with us. So, I'll introduce po yung ating speaker for today. So, back, way back, January, or early this year, we, we had a meeting with um, ACB regarding this supposed project. And as CCB being the node manager of GBIF uh, Southeast Asia, we had to co coordinate with them with the project. And then, hindi lang sa pag-endorsement, but we also uh, offered help para dun sa project. So, ang help na bibigay nila, as, as I mentioned last week sa ating regulating office, use of their um, species encoder data entry software and yung kanilang publishing toolkit for us to publish our data, our data in GBIF. So our speaker for today, he is the database specialist in ACB. She, he's also a web developer and research programmer of World Fish Center way back to 2010. So he has an associate degree uh, of computer science from UP. And he's a, he's a BS database management and development from West Network University. So, uh, without further ado, let me introduce you, uh, Sir Christian L. Yoran, or Sir Kit, for sure. Welcome, Sir. Thank you for your presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so, tinignan ko yung mga audience. So, buti na lang walang foreigner. <laughs> So, pwede ako, pwede ako mag uh, English Tagalog at saka medyo may intonation ng Ilonggo kasi from Ilong, uh, from Bacolod pa ako. So, I'm going to start sharing my screen right now. And, um, let's see. Oops, tira lang. Ulitin ko ha. Medyo hagaan akong... Okay, share screen. Ayun, nakita niyo pa? Kita, kita naman. Ayun, yes. okay, good. Ay, good. Okay, good. So, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting ACB to this uh, webinar. Uh, medyo ganto talaga ang ano ngayon, situation. Kaya, kaya <coughs> puro webinar mo nang, nang gagawin natin habang naka-lockdown pa tayong lahat. So, this afternoon, I'm going to discuss uh, about uh, publishing biodiversity data using... Um, and before that, uh, mga pala, thank you sa, sa pag-introduce kanina. Tapos, um, uh, marami ding ano, marami ding mga, mga, mga workaround na pwede natin gawin during this webinar. So, <clears throat> ayun. So, this, these are my three topics that I'm going to discuss uh, each and then uh, each topic is going to present um, specific uh, methodology uh, standardization for each uh, <clears throat> each uh, tools and uh, uh, biodiversity uh, management data management. So I'm going to discuss about uh, Darwin Core. What are the conditions and standards? Uh, Species encoder, um, a tool for biodiversity data collection. Uh, and also the integrated publishing toolkit. So, ito yung mga uh, three topics na i-discuss ko. Usually, when we do um, uh, training in our ASEAN countries, yung mga counterpart namin, usually tatlong module to eh. Usually, ay isang, isang module umabot na mga almost one hour, one hour and a half. So, ginawa ko, <laughs> kinompress ko na nila. So, hopefully, ma ma nako ma cover ma cover ko lahat ng mga aspects at saka if you have any question you can ask me uh, anytime so ayan. before that uh I'm, kung sino pa pong hindi nakakaano ng ECB uh short introduction line so ECB is hosted by the Philippine government uh 
it is overseen by the senior environment officials of the 10 ASEAN, ASEAN member states, ito yung 10 AMS. And then, ang ACB, we are also reporting with the three ASEAN working groups. These are uh, nature conservation and biodiversity, climate change, and wildlife enforcement network. And before uh, ECB, uh, it was established in 2005. Dati, ano nga, ARCBC, kung nakikita nyo dati. Ngayon, naging ACB na siya. And then, nandun pa rin kami yung office namin. I'm sure nakikita nyo, nandun sa may tabi ng infirmary. <clears throat> so, um, what, what, what are the overall mandate of ACB and the biodiversity information management? So, ACB is to facilitate cooperation and coordination among the AMS. Uh, ito yung mga pag-organize uh, ng mga capacity building, uh, uh, policy development, tapos uh, conservation and sustainable use of biological diversity. And then for the biodiversity information management, yun yung unit namin, kami yung, we are also providing technical assistance to AMS, mga SEM member states, uh, para mag-report sila sa Convention on Bio Biological Diversity at saka mag-develop ng kanilang mga national clearinghouse mechanism. So, beside, beside those uh, information, we also develop database using the global data standards. We also digitize, uh, also encode content, uh, engage in relevant partnerships, yung mga collaborators namin globally, hindi lang national, kundi more on global um, distribution ng aming uh, collaboration. Tapos, we also develop um, knowledge products. We have uh, API, our package, online web services, and also we develop uh, maps using the AGOL uh, for our mapping uh, services. We also uh, provide uh, uh, camera trap, training on camera trap, soundscape monitoring, and also provide uh, capacity building. So, Sa ECB, meron kaming mga thematic concerns. If you're looking at the right portion, meron mga uh, sorry, bilog na icons. So merong thematic concerns at geographical, uh, geographic concerns. But we're going to focus on um, um, biodiversity information management na, na unit. So, nangit na yun. Medyo delay yung ano. Okay lang po, nasasundan nyo. Okay, so uh, what is Darwin Core? So ito yung, ito yung madidinig natin palagi. Uh, tsaka ito yung, yung lagi yung sasabihin during this webinar. Uh, so Darwin Core is a foundation na dinevelop ng technical group, ng uh, taxonomic database uh, working group. Tapos may mga standards na ginagamit. And also a list of fields uh, and their corresponding definitions and they relate to biodiversity data. And also the Darwin Core, uh, it is intended to facilitate uh, sharing information about biological diversity. In other words, um, yung keyword yan is interoperable in different systems. So ito yung mga, mga, yung mga, mga key topics na we discussed this afternoon. And before Darwin Core, Meron mga yung mga existing na mga ano na mga tawag nila yung mga natural history standards. So they have uh, yung EML, ecological metadata language standard. They also have Audubon, they also have GGBN, and they also have uh, ocean data standards na uh, ginagamit ng Ocean Biodiversity Information System. But uh, sa panahon ngayon, yung ginagamit talaga mostly by the biodiversity informatics na mga uh, um, domain, we are using the Darwin Core Standards. So it was developed by the, the Biodiversity Information Standards of TDWG or TADWIG for short. So it was uh, released in October 9, 2009. So almost um, more than de uh, one decade na, na nakaraan. So if you want to know more about the Darwin Core terms, you can visit the their website, the TDWG, and then you will see all of the all of the information regarding the Darwin Core metadata standards. So there are multiple ways to document biodiversity. 
you can also um, I'm sure sa museum meron mga herbarium uh, mga preserved specimen fossils and then you can also document uh, records from field na uh, um, records and notes from field and you, call, you can also uh, document uh, origins of data like for example yung mga occurrence um, yung mga pictures audio which is yan din yung ginagawa namin sa ECB at na yung tinitrain namin yung mga counterpart namin from ASEAN member states and also remote sensing so these are the multiple ways to document by the VC gamit yung uh, using the Darwin Core uh, standards <clears throat> so uh, rule number one I'm I'm assuming that uh, you have already a um, data sets with you I mean like for example you have your own collection but in different format so for example looking at the Excel file you have a uh, species record or or taxonomic record in your own domain uh, you have your own taxon ID you have your own kingdom and phylum and so on and so forth and also you have a specific um, uh, institutional record that you can use to communicate from different uh, data data storage in different data data domain so uh, the, uh, the core file contains a column like a core ID but it in a tawag na it in a tawag na uh, me uh, specific na unique identifiers like for example yung yung if you're looking at the left column yung naka orange yung species id dapat laging unique id yan dapat hindi walang duplication walang 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 redundant na numbers kasi uh, yan yung gagamitin natin pag nag uh, publish tayo ng biodiverse data using the ipt because uh, ipt is very um how do you call this? it's very uh strict on, impl on implementing unique record for each uh species so i discuss ko pa rin mamaya kung bakit uh, kasi makikita niyo kung paano ito process na ipt at saka kung paano i, i accommodate yung mga taxon id species id unique using the unique identifiers so um Yung Darwin Core, hindi naman siya ganun ka, no? Kaya yung parang rocket science na <laughs> uh, very technical, mga technical terminologies. So, when you say Darwin Core, uh, it also corresponds to, like for example, you have, if you're looking at the um, Excel file or the matrix below, there are spec ID, there is also a king, phi, class. Uh, if you want to map those uh, uh, column or fields you have to rename your excel um, excel headings like for example uh, king you have to rename it to kingdom from phi you have to rename it to phylum kasi uh, pagdating sa ipt napaka uh, uh, case sensitive po yung ano niya ng mapping so ipapakita ko rin mamaya kung bakit um, kung bakit uh, ganun ka sensitive yung yung pag nagpublish ka ng biodiversity data using the IPT. So, uh, merong, merong mga unique record na dapat ding tingnan para hindi siya dun mag, uh, yung pag nagpublish ko ng data, hindi siya dun redundant sa, sa main na publication ng IPT. So, once na na match nyo na yung ano, yung, yung column nyo from your own Excel file to the Darwin Core terms, like for example, this one from uh, spec ID to taxon ID, kingdom, kailangan kompleto yung headings, yung kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, para, para mabasa ng IPT. Um, after you rename and matching your columns to Darwin Core, um, you will have a, either you can save it in any names, like for example, this one for for the demo purpose, you have taxon.excel file or text file. So, so the IPT can read both uh, Excel file or text file. And then you can use that to publish your data. So, other one is uh, when you do a mapping per column, as you can see from the right uh, um, 
right corner, you have the wingspan. Wingspan is not a Darwin core term. You can include the column, but uh, the Darwin core, uh, the IPT will just ignore this one. Pero, ang best practice po niya, ang ginagawa natin, for example, in different uh, content, for example, in wingspan, we have, we have a column called uh, uh, length. So, depending na po sa, sa paglagay nyo sa description, or you can put it a, a verbatim ang pwede nyo gamitin. So, <laughs> ayun na dahil. So, yun. Na hindi nyo po tinatanggap yung wingspan. So, pwede nyo pong isama yan, pero hindi yan babasahin ng IPT. So, kung may mga may mga mga columns pa po na hindi Darwin Core match, i-ignore po yan ng IPT. Pero pwede nyo po siyang i-rename to specific na terms na gamit ang Darwin Core. Pero i-explain ko rin po mamaya. So, for example, this one. Uh, once you created your species, you can also have an extension or core uh, what do you call core types. Uh, in IPT, you have the main uh, species, uh, species uh, XML, and you can also attach a extension core sa IPT, which is uh, going or pag may time siguro si share ko mami ipapakita ko mami kung paano ginagawa yung mga extension core. <clears throat> so for example, uh, if you're looking at the yellow yellow bar. It also corresponds to the common names because uh, each species uh, it has a uh, one is too many common names, same as the color blue and color orange. So ganon lang po yung pagdesign ng mga ano, pagdesign ng ng data sa Excel file, which is uh, ganyan po nangyayari sa sa species encoder namin. Dinesign po siya namin na ganyan from uh, one is too many na record. So once you save your uh, uh, species data, you have uh, metadata. Ito yung, ito yung mga information about the resource creator, yung author, yung information about the species data. And you also have the species itself that describes the species database. So ito yung mga, ito yung mga package na ginagawa ng Darwin Core na tinatawag nila na Darwin Core Archive. It consists of two files na pwede nyo pong i-publish sa IPT. So, uh, why use Darwin Core to design a biodiversity database? Um, we also uh, uh, encourage user or encourage uh, especially the biodiversity informatics community and also people who are working in a in a museum, uh, working in a field, working in a uh, universities to, if you are planning to develop a species data, we, encourage, we, we always encourage them to use the Darwin Core because this is a, um, this is a uh, acceptable format globally. So it also, uh, facilitates the addition of components and attributes of biological data. So you can also share uh, data uh, among, among networks in different formats. So hindi lang, hindi lang siya isang format na pwede nyo i-share. Pwede rin using, pwede rin i-bigay nyo sa, or i-share nyo sa ibang network or sa ibang um, organization, may isa lang yung format. So yung tinatawag namin na interoperability yung data. Ayan. So, next one is the if sige, mamaya na lang yung question. So, next one is the species encoder. So, what what is this species encoder? Um, dati, nung dinodevelop namin to, uh, ginawa lang namin itong simple. Parang ano lang, yung Excel file tapos ginawa namin ng interface. So, ginawa namin siyang encoding convention based from Darwin Core Schema. Tapos, uh, free naman siya. Uh, pwede nyo gamitin anytime, pwede nyo rin i- pwede nyo rin i-distribute kahit kanino kasi basta pwede, pwede nyo gamitin na uh, available naman siya freely. Tapos, ang downside lang nito, uh, Excel file is not always a perfect tool to manage your uh, biodiversity data but 
sometimes it helps you or aids you to to produce or um, manage a a standard information in many terms to Darwin core format. So uh, free po ito at uh, siguro after nito pwede ko pong ibigay sa inyo yung Excel file at pwede niyo pong pag-aralan ang encoder. At saka isa pang downside nito, dati it works in Mac but uh, I don't know why kung bakit hindi na siya gumagana sa Mac. Siguro kailangan ko siyang mag-install ng additional na na plugins pa or something. Hindi ko na po uli na try kung paano paghanain sa Mac. So, sa Windows, okay naman. Okay naman yung Excel file. And then, uh, the Space Encoder also provides comprehensive information. It is also provide the well-defined data, yung mga vocabularies, um, yung mga, maraming sa mga, mga information about data definition sa inside the Excel file. And then, lastly, the interoperability of the, the system. So you can you can use this Excel file uh, to encode your space data, and then once you finish the the, the digitization of the information, you can uh, immediately publish your data using the Excel file uh, in Darwin Core format. So um, ang ang importante dito yung ano, data compatibility with different systems. So yun. Uh, Yung, ang biodiverse information management, uh, usually, yung isa sa mga mandate namin is to develop tools to aid uh, ASEAN member states. So, isa to sa mga dinevelop ng BIM, yung graphical user interface ng Darwin Core. So, manghirap kasi kapag ano eh, kapag uh, right now, yung, yung field ng Darwin Core nasa, nasa almost 100 fields or columns Excel. So if you can imagine, if you, if you include species uh, one column at a time, napakahirap. So, yung ginawa namin, gumawa kami ng interface, yung parang, yung parang encoder type. So, dati simple lang. Hanggang sa uh, lumipas ang mga, mga, mga 10 years, siguro nanganak na nanganak, ang daming suggestions, ang daming mga comments. So, hanggang sa sinabihan na namin na, okay, tama na. <laughs> So, ganun ang nangyari. So, uh, we also developed, bukod dun sa Excel file, we also developed a uh, remote data entry or uh, web interface online. Pero, uh, pinaprovide lang namin to sa mga tao na gusto talaga mag-encode uh, on the fly. Like, for example, gusto talaga makita right after yung, yung data nila na naipasok sa database or sa server namin. So, Yung another one is Space Encoder uh, normalized data sets na. So, hindi mo na kailangan i-convert pa sa different format. Uh, Naka-Darwin naka core structure na siya. Tapos, uh, data compatibility with different data provider organizations. So, uh, once you open the Excel file, uh, ito yung makikita nyo na magpapapap yung, yung menu like for example, uh, yung when you open the uh, space encoder that XLS file, ito yung unang unang lalabas. So merong readme, nandiyan yung instructions, merong space encoder, merong search, common names, uh, geographic collections, vocabularies, data definition, at saka yung Darwin Core species, yung mga sample data sets. So ayan yung, ayan yung space encoder na ginuhan namin. Medyo naging komplikado na siya dati, simple lang yan. Uh, but now, uh, it's very comprehensive na to use. And then with the help from different uh, uh, institutions from AMS, so nabuo namin itong uh, space encoder ng kung gaano ka-detail. Pero dati kasi, ang uh, ginagawa, um, customize. So nahirapan kami kasi each country has its own uh, data definition at saka data structure. So, ang ginawa namin, uh, basta sundin nyo na lang yung Darwin Core, uh, okay na yun. So, um, okay naman sila. Kaya, sa ngayon, ito yung ginagamit nila. Pag, usually, ginagamit na itong oh, Excel file kapag nag-field work sila. At saka, pag nag sila kapag nag-work uh, outside office. Kasi, very useful to, to collect uh, biodiversity data. 
And you can also uh, include pictures sa encoder. Um, sa Excel file, uh, hindi siya nag-store dun sa ano mismo sa may cell, pero nagsisave siya ng picture sa folder na directory. So, hindi ko pa na-try kung hanggang, hanggang yung maximum ng image kung paano niya i-store dun sa, sa Excel file. Pero, uh, nakapag-try na ako ng mga 20. So far, okay naman. Kasi na, na, na manage na naman yung information at saka yung picture dun sa encoder. Tapos, kung mapap- itong search, kung mapapansin nyo, ang dami. Dati kasi, ano lang yan eh, uh, keywords, search by common name, at saka yung yung search by classification. So, nanganak na nanganak sa dami ng suggestion, yung mga, so, pwede nyo pong gamitin yan kung depende po sa uh, anong klaseng data ang hanapin nyo. Uh, for example, you can search by keyword, search by common names, or taxon ID, tapos you can also search by kingdom, phylum, class, order, family. So, ito yung mga specific na search criteria na pwede pong gawin. And then, we also have uh, IUC and threat status na pwede nyo pong encode We also have common names. And then we also have a geography collection. So, sa long... Ah, kung bago pala makalimutan. Yung pag nag-encode po kayo, merong mga, kung napapansin nyo, merong asterisk na red. Yan po yung required field sa Darwin Core. So, hindi po dapat yung naging iwanan na blank yan. Kasi kapag naka-blank siya, uh, hindi po tatanggapin ng IPT. So, ginawa po namin required field. Yung longitude-latitude, required field din yan sa Darwin Core. Pero, uh, it has been an issue ever since sa mga ASEAN member states. Kasi, ayaw nila ng exact location ng species. Kasi, syempre, prone sa poaching, prone sa kung ano man, may endangered yung species sa lugar nila. So, ang ginawa namin, dinisable namin yung, yung required field sa long lat. Pero, kung merong Kung merong long lot na record, mas maganda kasi makapag-generate po tayo ng map uh, using the GBIF uh, metadata na galing po sa inyo. So, yun po yung, ano, yung sa offline. Meron din po kami online, which is, um, hindi ko na siguro di-discuss to kasi um, ito na yung mga live data na ginagamit namin. Ito yung mga old version na online, ver- na online encoder namin na ginagamit. Tapos, um, yung kulig ko na si Carl, siyang nag-update nito at saka siyang, siyang nag-monitor nito from time to time na mag, mag-update, mag-collect ng information at saka mag-add ng other, other database. Ayan. Tapos, uh, uh, next is uh, what is the Integrated Publishing Toolkit? So, ito yung IPT. So, ito yung pinaka-importante sa lahat ng biodiversity data publication. So, IPT is an open source software na dinevelop ng GBIF. Uh, it was developed uh, I think 2009 or 2010. So luckily, I was I was invited uh, the first version of GBIF. Uh, lahat na mga software developer uh, in invite nila. So napasama po ang ECB dyan. Tapos uh, nagkaroon kami ng meeting sa Copenhagen. So from, the, from that time, yung mga first na version ng IPT, uh, yung pinag-usapan namin kung ano pa yung mga next na mga na mga technology na pwede nang implement doon. So lahat ng mga developer nag sama-sama doon sa Copenhagen tapos uh, to improve more yung IPT hanggang sa hanggang sa uh, nag-update na update na sa bagong version na mismo na ginagamit namin yung IPT. So yung IPT sa uh, they develop this tool to publish biodiversity data to GBIF. Um, yung, yung iba, yung nami-misconcept, uh, yung, uh, yung iba, yung, like for example, from other countries, uh, minsan, um, ang pagkakintindi nila, once you publish your data using the IPT, parang binibigay mo na sa GB yung data mo, which is not true. Yung data mo, nasa server mo lang, or nasa, eh, nasa domain mo, yung ginagawa lang ng GB parang ini-index lang yung data sets mo from your own server tapos searchable lang sa globalist using the GBIF uh, search engine. So yun po yung yun po yung pinagkaiba ng data publishing through GBIF sa network nila. Tapos uh, IPT you can also 
um, store specimen, national natural history collection materials, yung what I mentioned earlier. So, madami pong pwedeng gawin. Pwede ka rin mag-store ng uh, DNA material samples. Pwede ka rin mag-store ng um, ano pa ba? Uh, events. Pwede ka rin mag-store ng pwede ka rin mag-store ng mga longitude, latitude, specific location. Pwede ka rin mag-store ng uh, media. Like for example, yung pictures. So, yan pong kagandahan ng IPT na software na ginagamit ng, ng biodiverse informatics community. So, right now, there are 287 installations na IPT globally. And uh, one of the installation is in ECB. And then, ang main contact, uh, ako po yun. <laughs> so, ginawa nila main contact dyan as uh, pinatawag na help, uh, help desk. Kung sino mang gusto mag-publish ng data, kung sino mang gusto mag-manage uh, uh, ng biodiverse data, you can, you can use the IPT. At saka, open naman po siya kung sino gusto mag-publish ng data. And then, uh, when, when, uh, when you start using IPT, uh, ibibigay ko po sa inyo yung URL, uh, magpo-provide po ko sa inyo ng ng uh, uh, username and password para mag uh, uh, create ng resource. Ang tawag dun sa pag-publish pag ng data, yung Excel file niya is to, to create resource sa IPT. So, yan po yung ginagamit nila ng mga, mga terminologies para mag-publish ka ng information. Tapos, uh, currently we have uh, how many? 16 data sets. Tapos, we have um, um, almost 12,000 records that are already published to GBIF. So, right now, we have um, uh, the latest that we have is from from the Digital Atlas, Atlas of trees, trees and Wildlife in Thailand. Kung may kita niyo po sa left side bottom, sa may map, yan po yung kakapublish ko lang nung September 1, ay August 31 nakalabas. So, yun. So, August 31 nung pinablish ko siya. So, bag, bago lang po yan. Um, the data came from Kasset Sark University of Thailand. So, hindi lang po kami ang gumagamit ng IPT. Meron din pong gumagamit yung Thailand, gumagamit ng from ASEAN countries. Gumagamit ng Malaysia, Indonesia, Cambodia. Yung, sila po yung malimit ang gumagamit. Another one is, um, uh, one good example is um, data, set, data set came from from What's this? Uh, University of Baguio. Ito pa yung kaka-publish ko din lang nung, nung May, nung kasagsagan ng, ng ECQ. So, I don't know if kilala niyo po si Dr. Sinayda Bawanan. So, uh, nakikipag-communicate po siya sa amin at uh, tinulungan po namin siya kung pag-publish ng biodiversity data niya sa GBIF using our IPT. So, right now, nasa, nasa GBIF ng data nila. And then, nasa ano na rin yung information nila. Nasa globally discoverable na rin po yung data nila. So, yun po yung advantage ng GBIF. Hindi siya yung, uh, yung data mo kasi hindi lang siya nakastore sa isang lugar. Um, uh, pwede siyang uh, i-digitize mo at i-publish mo uh, globally. So, you can also, you can, you can also provide uh, information comprehensive information. Pero depende na po sa inyo yan kung gaano ka, gaano ka comprehensive na information na i-provide sa GBIF. But ang importante, yung ano, yung required fields ng GBIF, yan yung uh, required fields ng IPT, yun yung dapat na sumbihan. Tapos, uh, kung papansin nyo, ito yung mga, may mga other data sets kami na pinrovide yung uh, na publish yung makiling by diversity sa makibis meron din sa uh, from saan ba to sa UPLB Museum plant collection na pinablish din way back 2016 so lahat po yan may mga citation na na nakita sa GBIF so um, when creating a resource using the IPT um, siguro po may time mamaya pwede ko pong i-demo sa inyo mismo yung actual kung paano mag-create ka ng resource sa uh, IPT. But for this uh, purpose, uh, ginawa ko na, na siguro print screen na lang muna. 
pag may time mamaya, eh, siguro ipakita ko sa inyo, sa inyo kahit mabilis lang. So, uh, pag nabigyan ko na po kayo ng, ano, ng, ng access sa IPT, you can, the first thing you should do is to create a resource. So, for example, this one is a Darwin Core sample. And always remember na uh, wag, wag lagyan ng space. Either lagyan siya ng, like for example, this one, Darwin Core underscore sample. So, by default, yung type niya is occurrence. But you can change that later once your data set is already uh, uh, read by the IPT. So, pag pag nag-click kayo ng create ng resource IPT, ito yung next page na makikita nyo. Uh, merong source data, merong Darwin Core Mappings, merong metadata, published version, merong visibility, merong resource manager. So, yung sa source data, yan yung, yan yung um, Excel file or text file na ginawa nyo, tapos yan yung ipapublish nyo, tapos yan yung babasahin ng IPT. Tapos yung Darwin Core Mappings, yan yung, yan yung, yung, mga, yung mga fields or columns na automatically map by IPT. Tapos may mga columns naman na hindi siya babasahin ng IPT. Pero ipapakita ko po sa inyo mga yan. Tapos yung metadata, yan yung, uh, yung mga information about the resource, uh, uh, resource creator yung mga metadata creator, yung mga author, yung mga ganun, ganun ka details yung pwede niyang ibigay. Always remember na when you create a metadata, may mga ano po siya yung mga required fields na uh, hinihingi yung IPT. Ang purpose po niyan, para properly cited po yung isang institution or yung isang tao na nag-provide ng information. As well as para yung, yung information, babalik din po sa kanya. So, hindi, hindi rin po inaangkin ng GBIF yan. Parang uh, pinaprovide lang ng GB yung information outside ng domain ng isang institution. So, yung ano naman, yung published version, yan yung uh, kung ano ba, na map na rin bawat column, ipapublish yung information uh, using the the, the, the auto-publishing yung interval series niya. So, mamaya ipapakita ko rin yan. Tapos, um, and the other one is the visibility. Pwede nyo pong i-public or private yung metadata nyo or yung database or yung resource na space data na pinablish sa GP. So, nasa sa inyo po yan. Kung, alimbawa, kung if you're done with your data sets, you can publish your data anytime. But once you publish your data anytime, it will automatically register to GP. And then it will provide you a... UUID, Universal Unique Identifiers, that I will show you to you later. So, um, um, in general terms, the IPT is an open source software. Tapos, uh, developed by the GBIF Secretariat, and it is primarily the platform for sharing and comparing biodiversity data sets with the GBIF network. And then, um, or it is designed for interoperability. Uh, the IPT enables the publishing of content databases. For example, yung Excel file or text file. So, uh, using the Open Darwin Core system. And, uh, or yung tinatawag nila na, na EML or yung Ecological Metadata Language Standards. Ayan. So, uh, once na nakapag-create na pala kayo ng... Ano, ng ng resource, yung next na step nun, ito yung, yung mapping your, analyzing your metadata. Uh, merong, merong source name, merong number of header rows, merong uh, readable columns, merong selected worksheet. So, uh, yung source name, ito yung file name na Excel file nyo. Yung number of header rows, ito yung yung header ng Excel file nyo. Like for example, pinakita ko kanina yung taxon ID, yung kingdom, phylum, class. So usually, by practice, ang ginagawa niyan, uh, which is yung header row nyo, nag-umpisa sa row 1. So kung mapapansin nyo po, merong yung uh, number of header rows is in row 1. So lagay nyo na po number 1. 
or yung header rows yung number two, lagay na yung number two. So, by default, number one naman talaga yung usually yung ginagawa natin as uh, header rows sa Excel file. So, yung selected worksheet naman, eto yung, kung napapansin niyo po, merong sa Excel file, merong mga tabs. Babasahin po ng ano yan, ng IPT, bawat isa. So, either you can submit one Excel file and then attach yung mga diff, uh, several uh, tabs inside the Excel file. Babasahin pa rin po ng, ano yan, ng IPT. Tapos, um, medyo mabigat nga lang, pero... Uh, uh, depende sa, sa species data, sa numbers na ipapasok nyo. Tapos, um, ano ka ba? Uh, ah, halimbawa, kapag nagkapag-create uh, na kayo ng source data, tapos uh, may, may in-update kayo sa isang Excel file, the same Excel file, yung name na ginawa nyo, once na uh, nag, na, nag-publish kayo ng Excel file, I, lang ito, i overwrite niya po yan ulit. Hindi siya magkikreate ng panibagong Excel file. So parang uh, once na nag um, laglagay kayo yung panibagong Excel file with the same name, the same file name, i overwrite na lang po yung ano, yung Excel file. So uh, wag po kayong kabahan kasi hindi naman po siya mawawala. So the other one is sa Darwin Core Mappings. Ito yung minamap mo yung babat columns ng Darwin Core. So kung mapapansin nyo, ito yung mga ito yung mga field ng base din dun sa Excel file. Uh, like for example, if you can see, there are institution code. You can create your own institution code. Like for example, uh, MNH. MNH does one. Pero, pero depende po yun sa collection number niya siguro sa museum. Hindi ko po alam kung, kung paano format. But usually, dapat unique ID po yan. Hindi, siya yung, hindi po siya yung ulit-ulit. Same with the collection code. So, yung ginagawa namin sa ACB, kapag nag-provide ng data yung AMS, yung counterpart namin, um, uh, nilalagyan namin ng institution code. Like, for example, um, yung Thailand, yung Kasit Sart University, uh, lalagyan namin yung K, uh, KU-TH-001. Uh, so, yung mga, yung mga convention na mga ginagamit ng institution code. So, depende na po sa inyo yan kung kung papaanong papaanong uh, style or papaanong code na gagamitin nyo. Basta, importante, hindi siya yung uh, walang duplication. So, the other one is, uh, ito yung mga ano, ito yung mga uh, required fields, yung institution code, collection code, tapos yung basis of record. Uh, I'm sure yung sa basis of record, yung mga collection nyo, si yung yan yung ginagamit or yung mga may mga knockdowns po yan eh, yung mga collection. So, pwede ko yung mamili at saka pwede nyo pong i-map doon based doon sa collection na database naman. Tapos, meron mga catalog number, meron individual count. Kung napapansin nyo po yung sa, yung sa Excel file, nag-auto-map -auto yung IPT at saka Excel file na pinabish ko. Kasi, uh, nirename ko siya exactly doon sa Darwin Court. Pero, kapag hindi nyo siya nirename sa Darwin Court, kung napapansin nyo po, itong itong right side, yung unmap columns, yung earlier dun sa presentation ko, merong column na kin, phi, cla class order. Ito yung mga ito yung mga column na hindi naka-Darwin Core format. So, in-exclude ng IPT. So, ang, ang, ang pwedeng gawin dyan, manumanuin mo siya. Kaso lang, uh, hindi talaga siya best practice na gano'n ang gawin. So, dapat dun pa lang sa Excel file, kailangan mo na siyang i-map dun sa Darwin Core format, which is para pag pinabish sa IPT, mas mabilis yung pag-process uh, nyo ng mapping ng data nyo. So, yung sa metadata naman, ito yung, ano, ito yung mga uh, comprehensive information about yung mga resource creator. Kung mapapansin nyo po, mayroong mga section, by section po, mayroong uh, geographic coverage, taxonomic coverage. So, Kayo na po bahala kung paano nyo po ilagyan ng information yan. I'm sure meron po kayong information about those sections. Tapos, um, right now, um, uh, publishing organization will be using uh, the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity kasi yan po yung nakaregister sa GB. Pero, uh, ang lalabas po niyan sa GB registry is uh, yung UPLB na uh, MNH. 
Ayan. Tapos, um, always remember that uh, if you notice there are asterisk. So these are required fields sa basic metadata. Kapag wala po yung pag wala po yung laman, hindi po yung tatanggapin ng IPT. Ayan. So another important thing is the data license. So IPT does not accept um, uh, resource uh, kapag walang data license. So if you want to use the uh, data license, you can always use the CC by CC by zero na data license, which is yun yung, na, yun yung standard na ginagamit namin sa community for publishing data sets. And then the other one is um, uh, published version at saka yung visibility. So once na map nyo na yung, yung column ng uh, Excel file nyo to Darwin Core, you can start publishing your data sets and then make it publicly. So this one, ito yung ginawa ko kanina. Ginawa ko ng error. So for example, yung sample data set ko na pinablish ko sa IPT, uh, nagkaroon siya ng error. For example, yung basis of record sa ilalim, meron siyang tatlong error. Merong basis of record, merong uh, yung mga vocabularies. Ibig sabihin yan, uh, yung column na nilagyan ko ng yung basis of record na column, nilagyan ko siya na different format na hindi siya uh, naka-Darwin Core. Like for example, yung uh, basis of record, imbis na uh, uh, museum collection, nilagyan ko siya ng uh, ano ko dun? For example, nilagyan ko siya ng mga store collection, which is not a Darwin Core format. So, yan po yung error na la yung logs na nakikita sa error ng, ng IPT. Which is, pwede po yung i-fix na once na na na, na map niyo yung Excel file niyo to Darwin Core. So, yun lang po yung mga workaround. Uh, kapag kapag hindi na uh, ng species to Darwin error log sa IPT. So, always remember to map your column. Yun lang, yun lang po yung, yun lang po yung ano doon, yung technique at saka yung, yung key na para, para mapublish niyo po yung data sets niya. So, Ayan, once you publish your data sets, uh, it will automatically generate um, a unique identifier and then you automatically create a map in GBIF. Usually, um, it takes about uh, 5 or 5 to 15 minutes para ma-process lahat ng information na pag pinablish na po sa IPT yung data niya. So once na publish na yung data niya, may kita na yung maps nakikita niyo occurrence, either kung 100% match ba siya na taxon based dun sa backbone, tax, uh, taxonomic backbone ng GBIF, at saka yung coordinates, 100% ba na merong coordinates yung species mo, which is in this case, yung galing sa Kasset Sart University sa Thailand, nagmatch yung out of uh, 3,331 species occurrence, 100% nagmatch dun sa backbone, na taxonomic backbone ng GBIF, at saka 100% din nag-match na may coordinates. Pero wala siyang ano, wala siyang with year na kung kailan siya kinulit, kailan siya may modify. So siguro mga ano, yung uh, mga observation na kasi sa site university. kahit ng ibang ibang um, ibang institution na ah ito pala mayroong data coming from UPLB. So one good example is from uh, Africa kasi nag same situation din yung sa BIFA pero sa kanila iba yung iba yung funding. So yung Africa dati is uh, yung yung data nila about uh, space occurrence na pakababa. Kumbaga sa yung friend ng data information nila. Masyadong uh, may gap tsaka may kumbaga sa na may 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 bungal yung map ng ano ng Africa. So nung binig nila ng ng fund yung Africa na nag-spike yung ano nila ng space occurrence which is maganda yung resulta ng kanilang kanilang uh, uh, 
funding opportunities sa Africa. So, yan din po yung ginagawa ng GBIF. Uh, tinitingnan nila yung tinitingnan nila yung uh, status ng each country, especially sa Asia. Ang Asia kasi uh, isa, sa, isa siya sa mega diverse na na lugar pero uh when in terms of when uh, terms of um uh, species richness or yung mga occurrence data sa GB medyo blanco po yung yung southeast saka yung yung Asia na na na, na data so yan po yung ginagawa ng GB na provide sila ng funding to support uh na uh, museum support university or private institution to digitize uh, their uh, biodiversity data. So one of the one is yung sa uh, University of Santo Tomas yung lately lang kay kay kung kilala niyo po si uh, si Arman Pili siya po yung sa Herpwatch. So nagpa-coordinate din siya sa amin tapos ang publish niya ng data set. Pero yung sa kanya naman yung mga invasive species yung amphibians naman ang pinablish na sa GB using our IPT. So, yun po yung mga advantage ng publishing your data. Hindi na siya naka-store dun sa isang lugar, pero uh, um, parang nilalabas mo siya para mas lalong ma-expose ma yung information ng, ng data mo. So, uh, just to give you a background on what's happening in sa GB, so, ito yung in-explain ko kanina uh, about which type of data. Meron metadata, nandiyan yung data set. Tapos, merong taxonomic data, nandiyan yung species. Tapos, merong occurrence data sa GB. So, yung tatlong yan, yan yung parang, uh, those are the uh, uh, information that very important to GB in publishing data. Kung wala pong isa niyan, hindi po makapag-publish ng information using our IPT. So, uh, GB also developed tools. They also develop um, spreadsheet. Meron mga, meron mga uh, spreadsheet na pinaprovide ng GB, which is yun din yung kinuha namin, tapos ginawa namin ng interface. Tapos meron Darwin Core Assistant. Tapos merong, meron ding, I don't know if you're familiar with the Digger or Tapir na before pa dyan yung, ano, yung sa IBT, yung ginagamit ng biodiversity community. Pero hindi na masyadong, bihira na lang gamitin yung, ano, yung biocase, yung tapir, at saka yung digger. Mostly yung lahat ng mga biodiversity data sa IPT na siya ginagamit. So once na, once na na-publish na yung data nyo, kung mapapansin nyo, merong uh, magre-register na siya sa, ano, sa GBIF network na sa baba. So globally accepted na siya, magkakaroon siya ng peer review. Um, usually kasi iba ang ginagawa may mga may mga taxonomists, may mga scientists uh, sa community ng GB na tinitinan na yung data mo. So kapag may mga question sila, uh, directly uh, ini-email nila yung resource creator tapos tinatanong na ah, tama ah, tama ba tong data? Ah, uh, compare nila yung data nila sa data ng ng peer reviewer. So yan po yung yan po yung kagandahan kapag nag-publish ka ng data, data using your IPT. So, uh, sa GBIF, may, ito yung mga help desk. Uh, kapag nag-email nag kayo sa help desk, uh, marami, na pong, marami pong sasagot dyan about IPT. Uh, if you know, want to know more about IPT, merong sa GitHub, merong community site, tapos merong mailing list, tapos merong manuals. At saka, uh, uh, ACB is also here to provide technical support at saka for example, yung um, pag-provide ng server or access IPT para makapag-publish po tayo ng, ng data set sa, sa GB. So, uh, last, siguro ito final conclusion ko. Um, may always remember to familiarize both back-end and front-end, tapos yung organize yung data, tapos always utilize yung mga free na mga web services na ginagamit ng GB. So, yun po yung laging, lagi po yung namin sinasabi sa mga gusto uh, gustong mag-digitize ng species. So, laging practice lang talaga. Wag, wag po kayong kabahan na gamitin yung Excel file. So, pag may problema, kontakin nyo lang po ako anytime at pwede po kami tumulong. Tapos, ayan, um, ano dyan po yung website namin. 
Tapos, lagi mo sinasabi to na without data, you're just another person with an opinion. Kung baga sabi mo, kung walang data, baka ano lang yan, chismis lang, o kaya uh, fake news lang yan. <laughs> so, yan. So, siguro hanggang dito na lang. Pag may question po, eh, will, ano po ako. Okay. Okay. Anytime. Okay. Thank you, Sir Kit. Uh, Jeboy, can I call on you para mag-facilitate ng open forum for around uh, 10 minutes? So, Jeboy. Yes, hello. Okay, so basically, uh, we have one question na na-field ni... Oh, nakalimutan ko, nakita ko. Madurada po. Ni Mama Durada. Sabi ni Mama Durada, uh, can we use the Darwin Core as a digital database example in class? Uh, can can it be discussed and demonstrated? For, tama ho ba yun, ma'am? Uh, yes? Oo. Kasi baka pwede siyang, uh, as an example lang, just in case na papunta kami sa topic ng uh, pagdi-digitize ng data. So, uh, can we uh, can we use that one? Yung ating um, Darwin Core? Pwede yes, ma'am. Pwede pong Yes pa, pwede pong gamitin na sa, as a standard format. Uh, yeah. Di-discuss so, lang naman. Actually, it's apa. not uh, really uh, yung parang for publication na hindi apa, apa. naman siya gano'n. So, usually kasi kapag yung uh, yung lagi namin na-encounter, like for example, pag nag-umpisa pa lang mag-develop ng database, especially yung mga biodiversity data, yung sp mm -hmm. fix, fix to species names, taxonomic names, Yes. Uh, encourage pa talaga namin na gamitin ng Darwin Core. Kasi okay. um, marami pong advantage kasi mag-develop pa ng panibagong data structure. So, mas maganda pa talaga gamitin ng Darwin Core. O kasi ang hirap mag-develop ng isa. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> di ba na ano talaga. So, anyway, so we start with the Excel, right? <laughs> Kaya pa. <laughs> apa, apa. Thank you. Apa. Tapos yung Excel, meron din pong mga ano, data definition. Sige pa. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yung paste mo ko ng ano, ng uh, link dun sa Darwin Core Terms. So maganda po dyan pag, pag nakita nyo na yung mga Darwin Core Terms, ito rin yung, yung mga headers dyan yung mga gagamitin for developing yung same database, same as, as hmm. own Excel o Excel document ninyo for database. Hmm. So may idea na po kayo kung ano yung ginagamit globally okay. ng mga data fields. So yung advantage, ang advantage. And sir, sir uh, question po from Dr. Pampolina. With the digitized Ay, data, is it possible uh -huh. to generate GIS map across landscapes or regions? Uh -huh. um, from the Darwin Core system, uh, they only provide long lat column. But they also provide uh, extension core from the IPT. But uh, depende po kung anong classing landscape format ang gagamitin nyo. Uh, usually kasi yung GB, more on um, uh, species appearance ang ginagamit na nila. So siguro may ibang tools na ginagamit para mag-generate ng ibang maps. Like for example, yung, uh, yung mga data modeling na tools. So, by default, yung Excel file na ginagamit namin is long lat lang po yung nakalagay doon. Uh, Tapos, ano, further po, yung long lat is decimal format. So, in, di ba, tama sa repeat, no? Decimal, uh, ah, decimal format, format. Decimal long lat, mm -hmm. hindi yung merong degrees north. Hindi, eh. yung decimal or minutes. Ah, oh, papa yan. Decimal degrees. So, yan. So, usually, yung, yung ginagawa namin, uh, we don't aim to duplicate or build something that is already there. Uh, but rather, uh, we are utilizing the existing data scheme of GB to expose the data structure or standard by using Darwin Core Archive. So, um, kung ano yung nandyan, uh, parang hindi na kami nag-reinvent ng wheel. Bagas, ano yung, kung existing naman yung tools, provide namin, tapos... Uh, encourage namin yung mga user. So, yun po yung lagi, namin, lagi pa namin sinasabi sa mga gustong mag-develop uh, ng uh, data using the Darwin Core. So, may follow-up question din po from Mom Jess. Can we also add videos and pictures? Uh, videos aside from pictures and gano'ng kalaki po yung capacity for uh, serving the video? 
Ah, yung sa videos and pictures, uh, merong sa IPT, merong um, simple multimedia na extension core. Kung baga sa noy, meron siyang, meron, meron, kang, meron kang core na Darwin core, tapos meron siyang mga extension. So, isa dun sa mga extension yung multimedia na kasama din picture at saka video. Yung yung GBIF, hindi siya nag store sa sa server nila ng picture at saka video from data provider. Ang ginagawa lang ng system is ano lang, uh, magpo-provide ka lang ng URL na accessible din yung, yung picture at saka yung videos. Pero hindi talaga nag store ng GBIF. Kasi pag nag-store ng GBIF ng picture at saka video, sobrang dami. Sobrang Kung imagine, dami. more than 1 billion yung record ng sobrang dami. <laughs> So, uh -oh. kung meron po kayong meron po kayong server na accessible yung picture at yung video, okay lang po yan kasi yura ilan naman yung in-store ng IPT. Okay. So, mangyayari dun sa file mo na lang, dun na lang ma-store ma yun kung dahil case in case. Okay. So, apa, apa, pero yung yeah. pictures so, ba, ang format apa. ng pictures, JPEG, o meron din doon? Meron na dun sa Darwin Core? Ang... Pictures. Ang alam ko, kahit, kahit anong format, either ah, JPEG, anong for, PNG, PNG. Okay, well. ang alam ko hindi ata TIF. Oh, ang TIF masyadong malaki. Masyadong malaki. Basta oh, PNG, JPEG. Uh, mm -mm. Yan, ganun po yung kaya niyang basahin. Okay. Ayun, pwede niyang pong basahin. Ako, ako. Ang gagawin kasi nung IPT is inilink na yung uh, mga species. Inilink na lang yung pictures mm -hmm. externally. So, pag-inlink mm -hmm. yung okay. uh, kung saan man nakasurf yung picture na saan, doon siya lalabas yung picture on the video. Kung, uh, kung, kung sa ano po, like for example, if you want to provide the pictures or videos, kung meron po kayong uh, website na na-access naman siya sa labas, uh, pwede po yung gamitin yung URL, tapos yun po yung nalagay sa IPT. Or kung wala man siyang, kung wala po kayong available na, na website or yung server na pwede access yung image at saka yung video, Pwede pa kami mag-provide ng space sa uh, ECB. May, may, may dalawa naman po kaming server na malaking space storage para po dun sa mga gustong mag-provide mag ng information. Hi sir, may uh, uh, good question pa from Dr. Afwa. Uh, dahil maganda yung tool to consolidate data, especially for uh, distribution, can we upload digitized data na na-publish na from Uh -huh. journals, for example, yung mga result ng surveys. So, parang secondary data. Sir. Sorry, sir. Na Natuloputol. Ah, okay. <laughs> Ayan. Ayan. So, uh -huh. kung, basically po, kung pwede daw ba mag-publish ng data from journals, for example, for example, result, results ng surveys, mga secondary uh -huh. data po from literature. Uh -huh. Ah, pwede pa yan. Pwede pa. Basta as long as, uh, properly cited siya kung saan nang galing yung journals, uh, saan nang, kung sino po yung author nun. Yun, yun na naman yung rule of thumb ng GBIF eh. Uh, basta importante, ma properly cited yung author. Kasi ang daming, ang daming nagre-reklamo dyan na na-publish na tapos i-republish ulit. Parang ganun. So, basta properly cited lang yung metadata author. Wala, wala pong problema yan. Yung, yung publishing your scientific journal. Uh, Jay Boy. Sir JC. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, sir JC, may question kayo? Kasi na-mention kanina na question about yung uh, UPLB Museum Plant Collection, which was published Apa. in 2006. I'm actually looking at the website now on GBIF. It is published Apa. by ACP. So we actually Apa. Na Apa. discussed na namin yan during the Herb Watch workshop. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So chinak namin, it's not from the UPLB Museum. Kasi kami yung UPLB Museum. We, we never ah. actually published anything. So, ah, talaga? I got in contact with Leo Barua. Hindi pa siya sumasagot. Ayun, Leo Barua. Opo. Ah. You mentioned in your last state statement about fake news. How do we mm. monitor <laughs> and correct? Yung, I think, I think mali lang yung title. Eh. Yun yung assumption ko, ha? Mm. I think, but ah. It's actually a collection of data sets they got from the... Uh, the reserve. So, siguro nag mm. research within Makiling Forest Reserve. Mm. And, you know, nila. But the title is a little yun. yun yung mm. Opa. Uh, yung nalala ko po dati si Leo Baro, Baruan po nag-publish yan. Kasi nag, ano po kami dati nag uh, 
nagkaroon ng workshop sa Circa. So, isa siya sa mga participants na na nag-participate dun sa workshop namin. So, uh, meron siya yung data set na ganyan. Tapos, uh, although, at tinrain na namin siya kung paano mag-publish ng data sa IPT, uh, yan, po yung, yan po yung information na binigay po niya sa amin. So, uh, wala, na kaming, wala na kaming binago dyan uh, kung ano po yung information na pinobide niya sa amin sa Excel file. Yun din po yung pinablish namin dun sa data sa IPT. So, Kung may kung may ano po, kung may discrepancies, pwede po natin i-ano yan, pwede po natin i-correct doon mismo sa source doon sa IPT namin. Madali lang naman po yan. Uh, through ACB din yung correction. Apa, apa. Doon so, mismo sa IPT. Isip ko parang, oh sige, may we do the, <laughs> the check. Sino <laughs> may mag-check doon sa nag-check? Yun nga po. Yun ang, yun ang kaganda na kapag mas gusto nga namin yung may nag-check kasi para malaman namin, ah, mali, mali yung nilagay mo, ah, ganun ba? Sige, like, yung sinatin, oh, mas gusto namin yun yung ganun. So, which is, na, buti po na-flag nyo po na gano'n. Um, pwede, pwede ko po kayong bigyan ng access doon para i-correct yung information na gano'n. Na, yun. Okay po yan. Mas, mas gusto po namin yung gano'n. <laughs> Tulungan din kasi bigla, bigla kami, sige ko nag-lagay niyan. Then nagtanong-tanong. Yeah. <laughs> Ayan, si Leo Baro, Baruan, Baruan po nag-ilagay niyan. No? Which is, like, ando din po siya sa amin. Nag-provide siya sa amin yung info about that. Ayan. Matagal, matagal na po yun. Oh, It's still siguro. Oh. Pinabasa ko kasi laman, iba yung laman. Hmm. Finish ko yung link dun sa data set. Ang complete title niya kasi is MCME UPLB Museum Plant Collection. Ah, so okay. Kasi, kasi eh, first impression mo pag nakita mo yun, <laughs> isipin mo nga UPLB Museum of Natural History yun. Yun na, nga, oh. so yun din yung nasa isip ko. <laughs> Pero hindi, hindi, hindi yun sa amin. <laughs> uh, kaya pag tinatanong ko yung mga tao, sa museum, ha? Sinong sa museum? Hindi ko, ah, ganun ba? So, kailangan kontakin si Leo doon kung paano i-correct yung ganang klase ng information. So, okay lang po yan. Pwede po natin i-correct yan. Pwede lang naman, sir. Pero kung basahin mo yung ano, metadata, <laughs> wala namang na-mention na UPLB Museum of Natural History. Yan nga. Baka personal collection. <laughs> um, I think it's also automatic kasi if you read through the entire uh, page, kasi automatic na yung system kasi once you fill in a data, a form, uh-huh. Okay. Lalabas na siya lahat. So, pati yung GBIF registration, doon na siya nakadikit lahat yung plan. Hmm, apa. Hindi yung plan. Apa. Pati citation, yun na rin siya eh. Hmm, hmm, so, hmm. once you fill in a title, it goes throughout everything. Apa, yun na. Kailangan talagang tinokorek kasi once ah. it, nagkaroon ka ng mali, dami na siya lahat. Hmm, apa. At saka, uh, isa rin yan sa mga ano eh, sa problema ng GBIF, GBIF ngayon. Uh, imagine nyo, more than 1 billion records na nila. Pero, uh, hindi lahat yun perfect na may na unique record. Napaka-imposible yun kasi uh, lagi, malaki problema ng GBIF ngayon eh. Basta ang ginagawa ng mga data publisher, sige, publish na ng publish. Meron pa nga na ano, meron pang na-publish na, ida-download sa GBIF, tapos i-republish ulit sa GBIF. So, okay. minomonitor ng GBIF yan, kaya mahirap meron <laughs> talaga. Kaya meron silang peer reviewer kung paano i-publish yung data set na. So, tinatanggal nila yung data sa registry, tapos nire-restore nila yung panibagong data. So, ganun laging ginagawa ng GBIF. Kaya, uh, doing, uh, uh, checking the duplication, napakahirap talaga. Kahit mismo sa amin din. <laughs> kaya, kung ano yung data nang galing sa ibang data provider, they also, kung, wala kasi kami expert sa ECB na mag-check ng, yung mga, wala kami, sa ngayon, wala pa kami taxonomist na mag-check talaga ng information na kung tama ba yan o wala. So, nagbabase lang kami doon sa data provider na kung tama yung data na provide mo, edi, sige, check namin kung tama. Kung nang match ba sa Darwin po, edi, sige, publish natin. Okay. Right. Sir, may question na ako about this use into encoder. Apa? Paano kung meron kami pang gustong idagdag na, ano, na field? field hmm. Na lalabas din siya doon sa interface. Kasi, oh, may, me- medyo, was, ano yan eh, uh, ang ginawa ko doon, uh, naka-macro siya, programming doon sa Visual Basic. So, uh, pwede kang magdagdag, kaso lang, i-hard code mo siya, tapos babagoyin mo rin doon sa interface ng Excel file. Yun ang pwede mong gawin doon. Uh, uh, pero posible pa. Uh, may, may mga kailangan ba kaming kuning? May mga kailangan ba kaming kuning? Kasi pinaano ko doon sa... Ano namin sa IT specific ng si Jeff, mm. pinatuloy ko mm. sir, may kailangan daw na source code. Mm. Yung ano, yung 
Oo, okay. may ginawa ako doon tapos uh, naka-visual basic yun. So, pinrogram ko siya doon sa macro para tumakbo yung Excel file gamit yung para tumakbo yung interface gamit yung Excel file. So, pwede ko rin po kayo tulungan nun. At saka, uh, pwede ko yung apa, apa, pwede ko yung magdagdag ng field pero wag lang magbawas. <laughs> Ayan. Medyo nawala kayo. Okay. Ayan. Basta, ayan. Pwede, pwede lang mag, ano, magdagdag ng field pero wag lang yung magbawas ng field kasi mag-error mag yung, ano, yung Excel file. Okay. okay. Ang, ang, ang ginagawa ng iba namin na, kasa, na, ano, na gumagamit ng Excel file, um, depende sa, ano, depende kung maliba, depende sa style na gagawin nila. Ang ginagawa ng iba, hindi nila ginagamit yung encoder, yung yung nagpapapap doon na interface. Opo. Ang ginagawa lang nila, uh, minamatch muna nila yung lahat ng columns sa kanila kakapipaste by batch. Which is okay naman, gumagana naman. Opo. Pero kung gusto mo talaga na mano-mano, pwede mo siyang gamitin yung encoder na uh, gamit yung Excel file. So parang imamap din namin yung, ano namin, uh, yung din database na namin. Oo. Oh. Right. May, may additional questions pa ba? So, dun sa mga uh, wala pang maisip na itatanong today, uh, I think we could, uh, Sir Kit, we can uh, share your oh. presentation naman, no? Ah, sige po. Okay. Uh, we, okay. We will send the presentation to all the participants and all to the the curators as well as uh, nandun naman ang email address nyo and if you have concerns, you could either email uh, Jeremy who's our focal person for this project and of course, see Sir Kit. 